Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Cassie and this is Junkin 101 with Cassie. So today is part three in the Christmas in July collaboration with Sweet Pea Papers and Lisa Fisher and then like 20 different artists that are all doing this on their YouTube channels. So all the information can be found down in the description box below along with links to everybody's channel and Facebook groups and all that fun stuff. So, um, I have gone ahead and done some decorating. So if you haven't seen the first two um, videos, in the first video we made our cover and then in the second video we sewed the signatures in and started decorating it and in the third video, which is today's video, we're going to do some more decorating. So here's the cover. It's got the three snaps here to close it. And then inside we have this pocket that we made together with the library card in it. And then um, I don't remember if I did that on camera or not. There's a little cluster here. I know we did this pocket together on camera. It's just got this little tag and this bigger tag in it with the little charm thing there. And then I did this on my own. I just put some um, German book page behind there and the word December and some washi tape to outline it. This is a napkin decoupage on here with, again, the same washi tape. Inside, I created this journaling card. And the back is just plain for journaling. That just slides right there into that pocket. like so. Here I just did very minimal decorating. Um, here I just did a little cluster thing and inside I made this little card. On this page I just put some washi tape across the top. This is Merry Christmas. Here we have another pocket with a faux little postcard and another little tag with one of those flippy charm things. Here I've added some more of the red silk ribbon that I sewed in a little you know, pleated pattern. And I don't know as if I've done much more. Oh, I did do this page. And I see I might need to put some more glue on that. So on this page, I decoupaged part of a napkin. And then I used washi tape to outline it. And I took this envelope and I just put washi tape all over it on uh, both the front and the back. And then I took packing paper or packing paper, packaging tape to go over the envelope to, you know, protect the washi tape and keep it in place. And then I closed it with some self adhesive dots. I made this little embossed card to go inside and then I put some self-adhesive dots on the page that way it just velcros right there and you can put special little letter in there or something or whatever you want to do so I did go ahead and decorated this page up a little bit. I put this little snow sticker here and then 
it came with these other stickers in it as well so I just kind of put those on there because you know this had the blue in it and I wanted to decorate that up a little bit and I put the hat on the little girl that's on the page and that is all I've done so let's backtrack here a little bit we need to do something on the back of this because I don't want you to be able to see that that is a Hallmark piece. So again, I have my big bin of Christmas stuff next to me here. Um, we're just going to dig through it and see what we can find and go from there. So right on top here. I have some of this paper that we could create a pocket out of. Okay, let me get a pencil. We're going to go right there, and then we're going to go not quite all the way to the spine, but just a tad before it. Okay, so I hope everybody is doing well. Today is Monday for me. I um, took my son and dropped him off for summer camp with his Boy Scout troop yesterday. And he messaged me last night. They found a couple frogs. Unfortunately, one frog was dead when they found it. So they buried him and took a couple of sticks and made a little cross out of it. And you know, made him a nice little grave, and they named him Timmy, and the other frog that they found that was still alive, they named him Kermit, and, um, anyway, he woke up this morning, and he, he messaged me, and he says, Kermit's still here. So, I'm glad he's having fun. I'm going to try and get this to punch, but I don't know if it will. This punch that I have is not very good at all. So, I have this oval punch that I like to use. So he's off at camp having a good time. He's there for five days and I'm excited for him but I'm kind of nervous at the same time because this is his, his first time at camp but I went to camp when I was a kid so I know he'll be alright. Okay, I need to find my red ink. Wherever it has gone. Okay, I found the ink. Now to find the dauber. I have like everything moved off my desk because, you know, my husband likes to sit across from the table from me and eat his dinner. And so. Every time we eat dinner, I have to move everything off my table and then put everything back and it's just a pain. So I'm trying to come up with a new setup that I can just kind of leave everything to one side, but yet the middle of the table is still open for us to eat dinner together and stuff. So, okay. 
I'm going to pause real quick. I'm going to run to my sewing machine and I'm just going to do a stitch around this pocket and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have taken that to the sewing machine and I just did a straight stitch all the way around it. Let's just trim that up just a tad. And now we're going to glue this on here, but you can see that you can see that right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some red around this. I'm going to go ahead and use Fabri-Tac for this if I can get it open. I've been having issues opening it. Just to make sure it gets a hold of those threads. And this is kind of a shinier surface, so I just want to ensure that it's going to stay down. So as I was saying, you know, my son's off to summer camp for five days and my sister-in-law was here, but she had to go back home today. So my husband and my brother-in-law um, are taking her home right now. So I figured I could come on here and chat with you all and work on my journal in peace and quiet because I'm the only one home besides the dogs my brother-in-law is here for a week because um, my husband's parents went camping for the same duration that my son's camping, so. They just went on a little vacation. Everyone's vacationing. It's that time of year. Okay, so I'm just going around here and making sure that this uh -huh. adheres. Okay, so we've got that. So now that we have a pocket, we have to put something in the pocket. Well, we don't have to, but you know, it's nice if we do. So let me see what we have over here. We should have all kinds of Christmassy stuff, huh? I came on here today kind of just on a whim, you know. Didn't have anything at all planned. So let's take this paper pad and see if we can find a piece of paper we like to make a journaling card out of. I really like this. And I used some of this in the front of the book on that uh, library pocket that we created. So let's use some of this. So see, I used a piece of this on here to decorate that up. So, we're going to want our pencil again. I'm going to flip this over so I can actually see. Okay, we'll go about there. And then, for height, we don't want to go all the way, so we'll go about there. So what I was doing was I was just leaving extra room in the pocket so that the um, journaling card could fit in it. Okay, I see my marks. I'm like, wait a minute, I know I made them, where'd they go? 
We all have that problem though, don't we? Okay. So putting the extra paper back in my Christmas bin so we can use it some more. Oh, this chair of mine, I'm telling you. I really need a new chair. Gonna round the corners. Just, I find that when you make a journaling card to go in a pocket, if you round the corners, it seems to slide in and out of the pocket just a tad easier. At least that's what I'm going with, so. Okay. I'm going to ink around this just because, you know, we've been inking around everything in the red. And again, I'm using Distress Oxide Festive Berries is the color we're using. So, just go around, ink both sides of this. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine again and I'm going to stitch around it. So instead of making you sit here and watch all this, I'm going to go ahead and pause and I'll be back when I'm done. Okie doke. So I have one corner here that's a little messed up because my foot pedal got stuck on something underneath my desk. And as I was trying to turn the corner, it just kept going and going and going. So we have our journaling card here. It's been inked around on both sides and stitched around. I'm leaving the threads because, you know, I just think the threads are fun. So I'm wondering if we should maybe put something on here for fun. Like, um, maybe we should put a whale tail tab on the side of it. Let me see if I can find my whale tail tab punch. Doo, 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 doo. Here it is. I found it. I found it. Doo, 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 doo. I found it. Okay, so here's that same plaid paper that we've been using kind of throughout. So I'll just come in here and get me a piece. Well, well, I'll just go here. And fold that in half. Give it a little ink a dink a do. As my friend likes to say, ink before you stink. I don't know what it's supposed to mean, but, you know, just ink before you stink, I guess. Okay. And should we put it here where the thumb hole's going to be? Sure, why not? Let's try and stick that in the center. This is just some Barely Art glue. I'm out of glitter glue. And I need to order some more. But I'm like, I have all this barely art glue I need to use up. Okay, so that's going to go in the pocket kind of like so. So it needs to go about here. Hopefully I've got it in the right spot. If not, oh well. It's just a junk journal. People can forgive me. Okay. Now, should we decorate it up at all? Should we put something pretty on it? Where's my little pouch of pretty stuff? Do, do, do. Well, we've got this little deer guy. Should we stick him on here? 
Nope, I don't like him. I don't like him. Nope, nope, nope. I have a little pouch floating around here somewhere that's got a bunch of very fussy cut stuff in it. Do you think it'd be right on top for me? Well, of course not. Because why would that be any fun? What's in here? We got some Christmas stuff stamped on fabrics. Oh, isn't he cute? Okay. These came from my friend Joy. And I'm going to rip this. Oh, isn't he so cute? going to rip this across the bottom. I may have to stitch him on. Because he's just so cute. Get rid of this little extra bits that are off the sides here. Now, wouldn't he be cute just stitched on there like that? Maybe put a little bit of ribbon or something under him. Let's see. Do I have a plain... having an avalanche over here okay so I just want this to stick out a little bit oh hold up Fred hold up there's this that says love Santa on it wouldn't that be fun See what we can do here. Now we can't have it sticking out because, you know, that's kind of cute, I think. And then I'll come back in later and paint the snowman in. We'll paint his hat and the holly and the little bird and that. Okay, so I'm going to pause. I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. And I'm just going to sew this on. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So on here, I just stitched this down a little bit. Put a little bit of glue underneath that area. Again, I've left the threads. So I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to get out some paint and go ahead and paint this with you guys to show you how to do it. Now I'm just going to use acrylic paints. So um, I'm going to go get me a couple of really tiny brushes. I'm going to get some water and I'm going to get a few colors of my acrylic paints out. So just bear with me one moment and it'll be several minutes for me and just a couple of seconds for you guys so I'll be right back okay so hopefully you guys can see this okay when I started to come back I realized that uh, my phone was dying so anyway we're going to attempt to paint this without messing it up now I probably should have tried to do this before I put it on here but you know as part of life it happens 
So, I've got me some paints here. I've got some water. I've got my palette. I've got my brushes. I've got me some um, paper towels. So, the first thing I want to do is figure out some colors I want to use. I do want to use a little bit of black on his hat. So, we'll get just a tiny bit out. Oh, you don't need very much at all. Um, we'll get a little bit of brown for the tree. Okay, I know I'm going to need green and red. Oops. Okay. And for the paints that I'm using, I'm using the Liquitex Basics. You can get these smaller tubes um, and a big old kit together. Okay, I'm not sure what other colors we'll use. Um, let's see. I think we'll use some of this for the hat and the gloves instead of black. And then we'll mix in maybe a little bit of yellow with that for his scarf you know because the hat and gloves and the scarf all have to match okay so that's what I'm going to use right now for colors oops and there I go trying to make a mess already Set the bag of paints aside. Let's see, did I do this without getting it in the paint? Almost. Okay. So the colors I'm using are Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, Burnt Umber, Cadmium Yellow Medium Hue, Turquoise Blue. Ivory Black and Cadmium Red Medium Hue. And I do have a little bit of white out just in case I want to use white. And that's the Titanium White. So, let's start by getting ourselves a really tiny paintbrush. And I think I'm going to start by going in and painting his buttons black. So I'm barely putting any paint on my brush because I do not want to mess this up. And I'm going to stay in, try to stay inside the lines of the stamp. Get a little more paint. Okay, so there's our buttons. Let me bring you guys in more so you can see the picture. Okay. So we're going to clean our brush off 
And I think I want to paint his hat. And I'm going to paint his hat this turquoise blue. Again, I'm going to try and stay in the lines. So I do apologize if I get quiet doing this. I'm just, you know, concentrating. I'm going to turn my image as I feel is needed for me. You guys do it whichever way is comfortable for you. And you need barely any paint on your brush to do this. And just make sure when you get close to those stamp lines you just kind of really slow down and take your time okay so there's the top part of my hat now we'll do the bottom rim of it Try not to leave any clumps of paint. You want to make sure it's all nice and smooth. Put just a tiny more paint on your brush at a time. You don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way. I find, you know, rotating it is what works for me. Just remember what paint is wet. Don't get your hand in it, because then you'd be really upset with yourself. And my suggestion would be paint your stamped image before you sew it to your project. That way, if you do mess up your stamped image, then you can try again and it's not arity on your project. But, I didn't think that far ahead, so here we are doing it the hard way. And if I mess up, then I'm just going to have to, you know, find a way to fix it or just leave it or start over completely okay so I want his mittens to match his hat so let's paint his mittens Get a little more paint. And the reason I'm staying well inside my line is because this is acrylic paint. So if I go over that black line, it's going to take the black line away completely. So if I stay inside the black line, then my black line's still there and you still have the outline of what it is. And down here on his mittens is a little bit more challenging because he's got, you know, the white fluff. Sometimes you gotta go over it a couple of times
Okay, so there's his hat and there's his mittens. I'm just cleaning my brush off in the water over here. Get the excess water off your brush. Now I want to come back up here and I'm going to go in with the yellow now and I'm going to paint this little strip on his hat yellow. Now you can paint your picture any colors you want. Lighter colors like yellow and such are going to be more forgiving if you get on the black line they're a little bit more transparent so now I'm going to go into a scarf and I'm going to do different areas yellow leaving room for my blue so as you can see on this side it was just a line of two back and forth, so I just kind of did every other one, staggering them. So then here, we're going to obviously leave some white. Remember, pick up very small amounts of paint at a time because you can always get more paint on your brush. Okay. Now he's got some of his scarf that comes around his shoulder here, so we need to go in and paint pieces of it. Some of the areas are pretty tiny. Okay, so I'm going to move on to a different color and let that yellow kind of dry out some. So I think I'm going to move on over to the tree now. And I'm going to take my brown, just again, very, very little bit. For this, I'm just going to go along the edge for now and make me a real thin line along the edge because I have an idea. Being very careful when you get by his mitten, you don't want to mix your colors. Okay, so now that I have that very fine line of the brown, I'm going to add a little bit of white onto my palette here. I 
and I'm going to take a little bit of brown and a little bit of white and I'm going to make a lighter brown. Hopefully I'm in frame and y'all can see what I'm doing. So I just took a little bit of my darker brown and my white and I've made this lighter shade of brown now. I'm going to kind of twist it to get a good majority of that paint off of my brush. And now I'm just going to go back in here very carefully. Go right next to my brown, my dark brown line and color in the rest of the branch. And then of course up here towards the top it gets very tiny, very small. So just take your time and go slow. Make sure you don't have your paintbrush overloaded with paint. If a little bit of white shows through, that's fine. Okay, so there's our little tree done. So now I want to go up and do the holly. So I'm going to take just a tiny bit of red, do the little holly berry. Get rid of the red off of our brush. And then I'm going to go in with the green and do the leaves. Now you guys could get as detailed as you want to with this. You could, you know, blend your shades and stuff, but this is a very small picture and, you know, you want it to be cute. If you have the time and the patience to sit here with a real teeny tiny brush and you know do all these fine details and stuff and and mix your colors and and layer them up and shade and all that stuff more power to you it would look awesome but um i find just going in and doing what i'm doing to be effective Okay, so we got our green leaves colored and our our little holly berry. Pardon me, I need a little drink of water here. Okay. So all we have left to do is go back into the scarf and add some of this blue. So I picked up, you know, that's all I'm picking up on my brush. Just, just very, very, very small amount. So I'm going to go next to my yellow here and just do the like every other yellow or every other square by the yellows. Okay, get me just a tad bit more. If you think you got too much paint on your brush, just kind of tap it off. Okay. 
Now let's do this side. Sometimes you could go back and do like a, a second little coat if you feel like it's not covering enough of what you want it to cover. If a little bit of the white from the fabric showing through. Very, very, very tiny spots. Okay. Now we'll go up here and get this part of the scarf. Okay. He's looking awful cute. We need a little bit of orange for his nose. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of my yellow and a little bit of my red that I already have out. Okay, a lot of bit of my yellow and a little bit of my red. And we're just going to use this and dot his little carrot nose. And my little birdie, I think I'm going to color him in red. And again, I'm going to very carefully do this because I don't want to lose that black line of his wing. I want that detail to be there. I did go over his eyeball, but I can just go back in and put a black dot in for his eyeball. It's more the shape of the wing that I'm concerned about losing. Once this dries, you could go back in with your... Um, Faber Castell pit pens or something like that and you know redraw the 
the little details if you need to. Okay. And I think that's all I'm going to do on him. Isn't he cute? We're going to set him aside and let him dry completely before we put him in the pocket. And we're at about 50 minutes now. So I'm going to set this little guy aside so he can dry and I'm going to get rid of my paint palette and see how much paint I've wasted because you know and I just put a little teeny tiny bit out there so it really doesn't take much paint at all okay so let's bring this back into frame I'll bring you up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. So I just want to put some kind of decoration on this pocket. And then we will call that a video for today. And then there will be just one more video in my series. So... I'm just digging around over here. You know, that would be cute to turn that into a paper clip and just stick that on there. Let's do that. Let's make an altered paper clip out of this. So, oops. Get these paints to set up over here and behave themselves use the reach and the light just turned off on me okay get our ink here We're going to need a paper clip and then we're also going to need like another piece of cardstock or something. Having an avalanche over here. So I'm just going to cut me a piece of this. It'll end up being decorated on the back, and that's fine with me. Okay. So how we do this is we will put the big piece on the inside because I want more of it to catch. Put this on the outside. Going to distress the top of this. And then I'm going to put glue all over the back of this piece. This is our decorative piece that we want the front to be. And I'm really going to make sure I get quite a bit of glue where the paper clip's going to be. 
So now I'm just going to set this on here. I'm setting it down slightly so that the paper clip's not sticking over the top. That's why I decided to ink it real heavy. So you have something that looks like that on the back. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to trim out the shape. Okay, so now we have that. So now when you flip it over and you look at it, this side's decorated and the top of it's red there. So on this side, I think I'm going to get me a red button got all kinds of red buttons here so I've got this big see-through button I've got a more solid button smaller buttons this looks like a sweater button okay I like that button and I really like this eyelash trim let's see here's the end of it just gonna cut me a little piece maybe go down like so oops stick into my fingernail okay so this can go down here like so and I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac for this I just find that Fabri-Tac holds this better okay I don't think so, kitty cat. Cat's over here trying to steal my, oops, steal my glue topper. See, and then she gets me all worked up. Okay, so I've got my needle here. And behind me in a drawer, I have a bunch of baker's twine and stuff. I'm going to attempt to try and find a red and white one. I found it! I found it! Okay. So I've got my red and white baker's twine here. Just going to get myself a small length of it. And a trick here that my friend taught me Put a little bit of glue on your finger and then take the end of your string or your thread and roll it in it and then just keep rolling it and that's going to roll that into a thin tight little point and it's also going to stiffen it 
So it makes it a little bit easier to pull it on through and thread your needle. So I want to thread this on there. So I just took my needle and I stuck it through so that I know where my hole is because I want to go from the front to the back and I completely pulled that through. Don't do what I do. Okay. Don't pull your thread all the way through. So see now on the back side here we have a hole where we've already pushed it through. So now we can very easily she says, line it up. And then I'm just going to tie a knot here. I'm gonna cut one a tad shorter than the other. You don't want them the same length. Put your needle away so you don't lose it. And then I need that pack of ephemera that's pre-cut that we can't find. bean. Sorry about the dog. So I've got these words. Joy. Oh no, come back here. Okay, so here's the word joy. And that's too big, so I'm going to cut it down slightly. Ink it. Oh my goodness, I have a dog that just jumped in the chair with me. Okay. And we're going to put this right on there like so, but I think it needs some cheesecloth behind it. So I cut a way bigger piece than needed of cheesecloth. So I'm just going to cut me a smaller piece of that. We're going to stick it right there, and then we're going to put the word joy on it. Hold that for a second in place. Let the glue seep through behind the cheesecloth. Okay, sorry about that interruption. The husband came home. But, um, so here's our paper clip. And then we have our cute little snowman that is dry now because, you know, very thin paint doesn't take very long to dry. So we're going to. Put our snowman in here and it seems he's too big so we're going to trim him down a tad. I'm just cutting right outside the stitching line. And then we'll go back in with our corner rounder and re-round that corner.
and then we'll re-ink our corners. And hopefully he fits out, otherwise we'll have to just put him in a different pocket. Yep, he's still a little too tall. So, let's see if we have something else we can stick in that pocket. Like this. That fits in there. Okay, so we'll put that in there. And then, we'll put our paper clip on there. And I can see a little bit of white. So, I'm going to just go back and ink that to cover that white. Put our paper clip on there. And now we got to find a different little pocket for our snowman. So, we could put him here. And he sticks up a little bit. So we'll just stick him in right there for now. So, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me today. There will be one more video in this series um, because it's a series of four videos, and this is video three. So I'll be coming out with one more video, and that will be finishing touches and um, the final flip through of it. So we're just about there, guys. It's turning out really, really cute. I'm very happy with the way the kit's coming together. So any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Remember, you can find all the information down below and links to where you can find other people's videos. Until I see you all next time, take care of yourselves and keep it crafty. Bye-bye.